this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad therein. As it is in our tradition, we first begin by giving the Lord praise for the miracle of salvation. And therefore, as we celebrate this life and this legacy of our beloved sister, Marcia Maloney Cowie, please understand that she's in the hands of Jesus. And that's why we celebrate. So I'm going to ask you right now to put your hands together and thank the Lord for the work he has done. She is now with Jesus. We're going to begin our time together uh, following the program. And let me also acknowledge the family and let you know that we are praying for you that you have family here at the First Cathedral, not only the First Cathedral, but you have family all over the place to let you know that we love you and that we are in prayer for you and with you. As we begin our celebration of this wonderful life and legacy, we have here printed on the program a hymn that will be led by Jonathan, Abigail, and Jasmine. And if you can make your way, that would be greatly appreciated. But let me also say this. If your name is printed on the hymn, the, uh, the hymn, I'm going to say the hymn. If your name is printed on the program, I'm not going to run back and forth and announce you. If you could read your name and politely come up here and serve in the capacity that you have been assigned, that would be greatly appreciated. So right thereafter, these wonderful young people come and lead us in the hymn. We will hear music by Reverend Basin, and then we will follow the program as if it has been written. Amen? Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father God, in Jesus' only name we come before you, Father. We just want to lift you up and glorify and praise your name, Lord God, for this wonderful, magnificent life that you have blessed us with the opportunity to meet, to for her to grace us with her presence, with her love, with her teaching, how she showed how to love, how to give, how to forgive. I thank you, Jesus, for that wonderful blessing. Miss Marcia, Maloney, Bailey, Howie, Lord God. Now, God, I know that she rests at peace in your arm, Jesus. So that gives me peace and joy within. Because my mother, she always had her devotions in the mornings. And she always let me know when I call. She's having her devotion. So I had to call back. <laughs> I love my mom so much. She is, she is with you now, Jesus, Christ, one of the strongest army general. There with you, Lord God. I know that someday I'll see her again. Lord God, I thank you that you're rocking her in your bosom, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for my mother, Marcia Kaui. Thank you for all the blessings and all the lives that she had touched so significantly in a positive way. Thank you for all the friends and family who are watching the forum right now, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, and I pray that you keep us all together in you, Jesus. If there's anyone who who didn't get the chance to 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 speak to mom recently, know that mom understands. She's in a better place, and my mom's love will live on forever in Jesus' name. Today's scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 8. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I am not lost, I am a noisy man or a flame of symbol. And if I have prosthetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I have not lost, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, what I have not loved, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, but is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, all things and there is all things. Love never ends.
Shall we bless the Lord? Come on, shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah, this is a celebration of homegoing for our dearly beloved. So as we come today to celebrate a life that is owing home to glory, let's just lift our hands and give God a praise.
bless you. Today. She gave me the coping skills to survive in this world of harsh work, 
I'm a fear worker. She would always push my siblings and I to go to school so as to better our circumstances because she wanted us to have a better life than she did. She always wanted the best for us. My mom taught me how to be kind. What it means to love. She was one of the reasons I wanted to become a lawyer and help people. Among some of the things my mom loved were her independence. She loved teddy bears, pictures of horses, and she loved flowers. She loved the oldest music, and some of her favorite songs came from artists such as Elvis Presley, Benny King, Sam Cooke, and Whitney Houston. My mom also loved people. She loved being around people, having people around her, seeing people's laughter and smiles. My mom was not a wealthy woman in material things, but she was enormously wealthy in spirit. She was very given of her time to others, and one of her favorite ways of showing how much she loved and cared for others was through the meals she cooked and shared. Overall, my mom was a kind woman. My mom was a kind woman who took extended family members into her home and cared for them, even when she had a small amount for herself. My mom was a kind woman. I remember when I was around 10 years old, I had a friend from school who used to attend school with no shoes, no shoes whatsoever. Because his family was poor, I told my mom and she bought him a pair of shoes. My mom was a kind woman. I remember my sister Janelle and I would bring home stray dogs and cats to her home in Jamaica. And my mom would always allow us to keep them. My mom was a kind woman. In her last few years and months prior to her passing while dealing with health issues, she still went out of her ways to do things for family members because she had a big heart, a heart full of love. Even with her passing, she still shows kindness. My mom was a kind woman. And she had a heart full of love who gave more to the world than what she received in return. My mom was a kind woman who would have wanted her children, those who loved her, to carry on. She would have wanted my two sisters, Janelle and Francesca, and all those who grieve her to hear the words of this poem by my own author. As I sit in heaven and watch you every day, I try to let you know the signs I never went away. I hear you when you're laughing and watch you as you speak. I even place my arms around you to calm you as you weep. I see you wish the days away, begging to have me home. So I try to send you signs so you know you're not alone. Don't feel guilty that you have life that was denied to you. Heaven is truly beautiful, just you wait and see. So live your life, laugh again. Enjoy yourself, be free. Then I know with every breath you take, you would be taking one from me. My mom was a kind woman who would be forever missed and eternally loved. Fear one mom, mother, grandmother, sister, friend. We think about you always. We talk about you still. You have never been forgotten, and you never will. We hold you closely in our hearts, and there you will remain to walk and guide us through our lives until we meet again. Until we meet again, Mom, I love you. Please rest in peace. Thank you all for sharing the family's grief at this time. Thank you all for showing up. It's so great, my dear, loving sister.
And each time she stood at the door and I yelled yeah, here, we kept repeating those men and her, I love you. Till it became a symphony of sadness. Till I went down in the air and I was still here in the city. I love to stay. We started climbing again. And I thought to myself, surely that she is here. And this summer, we will go to Hawaii. I knew that God had healed her. And I knew that she, she would learn when she would move on to a better place. So come Monday morning, when I dropped my daughter off to school, and I went to see her. And I saw that she passed away. I felt betrayed. We had planned on going to Hawaii, Lord. I thought that you would heal her. But what I realized is that my ways are not God's ways. My better place is not his better place at times. And what I realized, as my sister always said, come tomorrow and the Lord takes me home. I am happy. There is no great place than to rest in the heart of God, not Jamaica, not Hawaii. We planned the Hawaii. We planned on the never singing. But we never planned on loving. We always left each other with a kiss, with a hug, and an I love you. She always said, we never when you sing, let me know when I will come. She is gone, but she lives in our heart.
but my first was itinerary, she lives on. When we dance, but I love the sisters, I have so many memories. If I should be born of them, I would bring them in tears, but my sister, she's a compassionate person. She will always be in our hearts and in our thoughts. Live on, Monster, live on, I continue. Um, my name is Anne Marie, and uh, I am Marcia Bailey's sister. Uh, Marcia Bailey was a a good sister, a good wife, a very good mother, and a good businesswoman. I was proud of my sister. When I was 14 and fell ill in school, I had to go home. And the first person I thought of when my mother was in the hospital was Marcia. Because I had pain in my tummy at that time, she nursed me back to health so that I could go back to school the following day. If it weren't for my sister Marcia, I wouldn't be the person I am today. When my mother wasn't there, she was like a mother to me. So I saved up to treat Marcia every birthday, and sometimes I'd be pulled away. But before my loving sister died, I got to tell her myself how much I love her, and that I'd always cherish her so I didn't want to see my sister die. But I realized I'm not in control, God is. Marcia will always be here with us. She made sure of it in my life, that she will never be forgotten, and that her children will never forget her, nor her grandchildren. Marcia was a pretty woman, and pretty women are always envied. So I had to make sure there was sufficient security for Marcia. We will miss her dearly, and we hope you will remember my sister, Marcia Bailey, as a good wife, a good mother, a good sister, a good businesswoman, and a very good cook. And she is like an angel and will always be here with us. Good morning. I am going to be speaking on behalf of my father, like Chip, um, because I think to express these words tomorrow. My heart is heavy, and I'm so sad to see my dearly beloved sister depart from her earthly journey. She, however, lived a life of many challenges, and it is only fitting to say she had earned her wings to fly into glory. For her children, extended family, and friends, I can only leave these verses in an attempt to soothe their sorrows. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. May her soul rest in perpetual peace. Sleep well, Marcia. I will the read of this on behalf of Marcia's aunt. Marcia, niece, as affectionately called.
called by me, Auntie Nainan. This pretty niece of mine was born a proper child, a special child. I genuinely believe that God had used a special way to form such a marvelous woman. Her love went far beyond just the physical affection, but resonated with me spiritually. In my own experience with her, Marcia was always a peaceful, generous, joyful, humble, and youthful person. Marcia was a woman with a strong love for family. For this, her beauty is not just physical, as nothing is more beautiful than a person who is family-oriented and will go out of their way to make life for others more pleasant. I am 100% sure Marcia has left her positive person on everyone she has ever interacted with. This woman of excellence loved luxury. Marcia always dressed in the best and would always wear her clothes well. This went across the board, not only for herself, but for those close to her as well. If you did not have any, she would always find a way to make it available to you. Marcia had a wonderful shape. As she would pass, you could not help but admire how wonderful she had been made. Overall, my niece was a precious woman Marcia's life was filled with exquisite examples of her humanity. Family and friends can attest to this being so. The joyous memories we shared, the touches of love, the never-ending laughter, these are what I'll cherish forever. Marcia's time on earth seems all too short for those who knew her, but as long as there is love and memory among us, Marcia will always be with us. Let us remember her as an exemplary woman of substance that she was. Marcia, a woman of substance, rest in peace. We continue in faith, love, and joy at a time when there is so much sorrow. Our flesh, it feels the pain, but our spirit is excited because we look forward to seeing Sister Marcy Cowie again in glory. We're not here to mourn Sister Marcy, but we are here to celebrate her homecoming. Be it resolved that we humbly submit ourselves to our Heavenly Father, who does all things well. We lift up the family to him, for only he is able to console you at this difficult time. Rest in the knowledge that he will be with you to strengthen and support you as you go through these days of adjustment. Our Heavenly Father, He understands the pain, and only He can bring comfort, hope, and joy in the midst of it. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, what great things God has in store. Be it resolved that our Archbishop Bailey, Co-Pastor Michael Bailey, officers and members of the First Cathedral, we express our prayers, love, and support to the entire family. God bless you all. Good afternoon. Um, James Francisca. I am Marcia Kelly's daughter. I will be reading her obituary today, written by her mother, which is said now. The beautiful Miss Marcia Kelly was born on November 14th, 1962 in the parish of St. Anne, Jamaica, to the late Miss Minetta Nugent and Mr. Raphael Bagalou, who was named, and was named Marcia Maloney Bailey. She cared for her loved ones and gave her all to everyone she knew. Marcia completed cosmetology school and was owner and CEO of a successful cosmetology business in Jamaica, and also was the most outstanding QCA at her job in the US. She gave her life to Jesus Christ and was a member of the First Cathedral Church. Marcia Cowie was an angel and God's blessing on earth. She dedicated her life to her children, loved ones, and friends. The lives she touched have forever been changed positively by her love, care, compassion, and support. She was truly blessed and enjoyed spending time with her family and friends. 
and have joy in her children and grandchildren and the love of her life, Mr. Lori Wilson. She leaves behind three children, Wayne, Janelle, and Francesca, two son-in-laws, Clayton and Eddie Kume, one daughter-in-law, Joanna, seven grandchildren, Alex, Anastasia, Nathaniel, Jonathan, Abigail, Jasmine, and Lloyd, three brothers, Errol, Anthony, and Lloyd, three sisters, Andrea, Emery, and Danny, aunts, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. After all the joy and love she has brought into the lives of those she knew, Mom now rests in the arms of sweet Jesus with joy eternal and true peace forever. Come on and bless the name of the Lord.
She's not floating around on some cloud. As Jesus made it so clear in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, listen to it. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. You see, the language that Jesus uses indicates that he has prepared permanent rooms, dwelling places for his children. And I mean real, habitable, personal abodes. Now, isn't that such a great thought? But here it is. It is difficult for us to grasp. And it was not easy for the original writers to communicate. I think about this man, this man named Joe Bailey. Joe Bailey, a man who fought long and hard on heaven as he lost three of his six children in their youth. And he put it this way, and it might sound silly to you. How would the Eskimo describe a pineapple to others in his village, even if he were transported to Hawaii and then returned? <coughs> and this is what was said. Sweet and juicy bubbler is still about as close he could come. But you see, in the same way, how would you describe ice to a desert tribe? And how could you tell people of heaven? Yet the thought may be clear enough. You see, Marcia is in an abode designed for her by the architect of the universe and the savior, savior of her soul. And listen to this, her room is perfect for her because he has already known her every thought and desire. It is more than she ever conceived of or wished for. And this is not just some sentiment. This is reality. This is eternal reality. And with that being said, it is a wonder that believers try to delay their entrance into heaven as long as possible. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said, because I believe the Apostle Paul had it right when he wrote, wrote to the church of Philippi in Philippians 1, 23. Listen to what he said. He said, I'm hard pressed. But then he went on to say this, my desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. I can't even tell you something. I really did. It's always far better to be with Christ. It's far better whether you are nine months or nine years or 19 or 39 or 89. Listen, we know where our sister is and it is so much better than anything she's ever experienced here on earth. So when Jesus says, if I were to bring you back to John 14, particularly verse 1, let not your hearts be troubled, he means it. In fact, it is a command. And you see, Marcia is also in a glorious state because of what is not there. Listen to me very clearly. Listen to what the gospel is. Listen to what it has done. There is no longer any death. And Jesus says of departed believers, and according to the book of Luke 20, verse 36, they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons and daughters of God, being sons and daughters of the resurrection. Unremitting eternal life courses through their souls. But I've got a confession for you this wonderful afternoon. You know, through my short time pastoring, I have seen more death than I wished for. And to me, it's not natural. You see, Adam and Eve were not created to die. Death was naturalized by sin, and it is always wrenching it, regardless of the godliness of the departed. And a beloved family member or friend is torn from the earth, from us, and it hurts. But now, for Marcy, listen to me clearly, there is no death. Listen to that thought. For Marcia Cowie, there is no death. Let me say it one more time so you get it in your system. For Marcia Cowie, there is no death. What a beautiful thought that is. Listen to why I say what I say, because those in heaven will never again experience death and separation. The dark specter will never come here. We sorrow, and it is all right that we do so. But listen, love and like sorrow, deep love, deep sorrow. And 
trying to bring you back to the text. You see our Lord himself wept tears over young Lazarus and his sisters, though he would raise Lazarus from the dead. And at this moment, Christ sympathizes with our human pain and mourning because as God incarnate, he experienced human sorrow. Listen to me. Those who experience tears, tears are a language he understands. And as the psalmist wrote, according to the 56th Psalm, verse 8, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? But this, but now for Marcia Cowley, there is no sorrow. Revelation puts it this way. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, no crying, no pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. We have had tears. And rightly so, but not so with Marcia. Though the stars fade and the sun turns to ice, she will never suffer hurt. She will never suffer bereavement. She will never suffer grief or even a lump in her throat. For Marcia, listen to me, family. For Marcia, there is no longer any pain. And it's tough to suffer the process of aging, as I presume, as did Marcia. It's tough to suffer the ravages of death as Marcia. But in heaven, there is no pain ever. In fact, there is no weariness, no need to end the conversation because of an ache. Neither is there any pain of misunderstanding and hurt feelings, no relational sorrow of any kind. It's free, open, unintended, unending exchange. Along with this, there is nothing that defiles. Listen to me again. Revelation says this. Revelation again says of heaven, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you see, over the years, God's grace had woven godliness into Marcia's soul. And she felt a dissonance with the course of this world, with its blasphemies and its perversions and its cruelties and its deceptions and its unfairness. But listen, there's nothing now that can vex her sweet soul. She lives in a constant stream of truth and goodness. So heaven is glorious indeed, and not simply for what is not there. Heaven is glorious because of what is there. Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of heaven. And as the hymn puts it, the Lamb is all the glory of Emmanuel's Lamb. And Marcia has seen him and has become like him as the scriptures promise. Listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will be his has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. So, Marcia, yes, Marcia Cowie is right now. Like him. Did you hear what I just said? She is like him. Did you hear what I just said? She is like him. She is like him. I'm often reminded of the preacher and the poet, John Don. Listen as he reveled and he said this, I shall so be like God that the devil himself shall not know me from God. He will not be able to tempt me any more than he can tempt God, nor will there be any more chance of falling out of the kingdom than of God being driven out of you. Again, such a beautiful thought, such beautiful words. And when we pray, uh, such as that young, wonderful lady prayed today the Lord's Prayer when she sung it, when we pray our Father in heaven, because heaven is the place of his throne and the perfect place of his worship. As believers, we are filled with the worshipful sense of divine paternity, and the Holy Spirit within us causes us to cry, Oh, our dearest Father, our Father is the lyric of Marcia's existence. And her experience is one of total well-being. It's of shalom. It's of peace wrought by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And while here on earth, Marcia shared a unity with those who preceded her to heaven. The same spiritual blood, the same spiritual DNA that infuses their perfected soul. Listen to where it comes from. From 
Abraham downward to the apostles and even on to the believers from all the ages courses through her soul. And now she's with the spirit of the righteous made perfect. And she is talking with the saints of the centuries and joining them and singing recurrent choruses of worthy is the man. Oh, that sounds like ecstasy, doesn't it? It sounds like ecstasy. But guess what? Ecstasy is too small a word to describe what she is experiencing. Everything that we have described from what is not there to what is there is Marcia's experience in all its fullness. She had a glimpse of these things while here on earth and understood the words of the apostle for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory of, of, of beyond all comparison. And as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And now, She's traveled through the unseen to the eternal to the real. And the reality that is now hers makes earth a distant fading shadow. So this day, as you have entered many of you into the house of mourning, these are some of the things that will benefit your souls. And in these tender, tender moments, may this knowledge Grace the souls of the grandchildren and children of Marcia in the succeeding generation. But as I get ready to land the plane and close our time together through this holiday, please listen to the question that I have for you today. I think it's a fair question, but it's a real question. What would Marcia say to us, if she were to stand before us today here at her funeral service, we can have a good idea because of her commitment in Christ. I think she would say the following. Everyone we meet is of great importance. They all are made in the image of God. They are immortal souls in their destiny. He rests on whether they believe the gospel or not. I bet you she wouldn't just say that. She probably would say this as well. Jesus Christ is the sole hope of every soul. I don't think she would stop there. I think she would leave us with this. Christ's death was sufficient for her sins and indeed for the sins of anyone who comes to him. I don't think she would stop there. I think she would dive into the word of God and tell us this, that the gift of forgiveness comes from grace alone, not by works. And she would tell us what the book of Romans says according to chapter 11 verse 6. If it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. I think she would say this. Salvation comes by faith in Christ. And she would tell us about what Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man or no woman can boast. She would urge us. To give first priority to these matters. For what does it profit a man or woman to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? As for Marcia herself, she would tell us not to mourn for her. Because though she has experienced death, now she is perfect. Now she is complete. Now she is whole. She would say the following and make this bold declaration. And I pray that you would rejoice as you can see her make this declaration. She would say, children, I'm with Christ. I'm with Christ. And I'm far better off. I'm with Christ. And I'm far better off. I'm with Christ. And I'm far better off. Can you hear me? I often imagine sometimes listening to that angelic choir in the heavens. Can you hear it? They're probably singing to him and she's in that angelic chorus shouting this. Time is filled with swift transition. No earth a move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. They're probably reminding us from 
unchanging hand. And maybe they would finish that hymn. And maybe they would conclude their time together as a group of warrior. And then to the choir said, I'm going where the wicked shall cease from troubling. The weary shall be at rest. All of the saints of the angels will sit at his feet and be blessed. Listen to me very clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, she's with Christ. She's with Christ. She's with Christ. And she's far better off. She's with Christ. And she's far better off. She's with the one who saved her mind, her soul, her emotions, her body. The one who saved her from the top, the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, her right side, her left side, all the way around. She's with Christ. And she's far better off. I guess I should ask, are you with Christ? So one day you'll see her again. As I always tell people, as I get ready to lead us in the recessional, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, this is a scene later. But if you're not a believer, this might be a bye-bye. Be with Christ, because it's far better. She's with you, and she is in that place where you promise that you have plenty of room for any and everyone who would believe. So, Lord, we want to say thank you. We honor you. Touch this family. Touch them as they go on. It's in your name, Jesus, that I do pray and celebrate you as our Messiah. In Jesus' name, amen.